I keep on uh, I keep on waking up at seven no matter what time I go to bed. So last mm -hmm. night I went to bed at three, still woke up at seven. Uh, anyway, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. Mm -hmm. Do 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 do. Okay, so, uh, Glacier Ridge, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, first let's talk about the, uh, thing that we're doing. I know, I know, Twitch says Dungeons and Dragons, but understand that I don't have another option. Uh, it comes up, there's no option for TTRPG, there, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Monster of the Week is what he's trying to show you, but it's it's very hard with the background. There we go, perfect. Almost there. We go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Yeah. yeah, great. There we go. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and it's actually like halfway off on stream anyway. So, <laughs> there, there we go. Perfect. Monster of the Week. There's the book. Uh, it's made by Michael Sands. Uh, he's a cool dude, I'm assuming. I haven't actually watched him or seen anything of him, but he... That's speculation. He made this, so that's what I'm basing it on. Um, so, what it is, is a recreation for a tabletop of your favorite Monster of the Week TV series. What are Monster of the Week TV series, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. Uh... Smallville is apparently Monster of the Week. I found that out just recently. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, also Monster of the Week. Uh, Supernatural. Oh, no. Supernatural is the most well-known Monster of the Week, I think. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. X-Files is also a pretty big name as well. Um, but yeah, basically any show where they fight a different monster every single episode... Doctor Who, actually. That's another one that's Wasn't, uh, Monster of the Week. The one with the crazy dad. Warehouse 13? One? I don't think that was Monster of the no, Week, because no, no. it's not monsters. No, no, no. Oh, not Warehouse 13. Uh, Fringe. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's monsters in that one. It's just like weird I science experiments. Fringe. Fringe was really good. It got kind of that, I messy think it would, at the I think end. it qualifies Monster of the Week. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, because it was always some some weird weird thing yeah but it was never a monster it was always like somebody with like a health crisis usually was it yeah it was I like oh this these I people are melting um this guy if he has if he makes this lady uh pregnant she instantly has her baby it's like and then the baby dies of old age uh, okay. that was one episode. This guy hooked up with this girl in a hotel, rushed her to the hospital. I think that was one. Was that one of the first ones? Yeah. The, first the, the baby exploded out of the mom and then um, ended up dying like 15 minutes later of old. Oh right, because he had a he had a, like an umbilical cord still. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so. Moving on. Yeah. Sorry. Fringe is a good series if you want to watch it. I don't know where you can watch it, but it's a good series. Um, Warehouse 13 is also a good series, but also I wouldn't necessarily consider that Monster of the Week. Um, That's Artifact of the Week. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, other than that, it's a fun game. Try it out. It's something to do other than d and um, Not saying anything bad about d and but if you prefer a more roleplay oriented game, and less rule uh led combat and things like that then try it out see what you think um glacier powered ridge by apocalypse. powered by the apocalypse is the thing that's running it so any of those would work well um additionally uh glacier ridge what is glacier ridge it is our my campaign setting um, that is based in the Northwest Territories in a fictional town near the Nahani Valley National Park. Uh, Nahani Valley National Park has some weird history, so I was like, you know what? Let's do it there. 
Uh, Glacier Ridge, the closest town would be Fort Simpson. Fort Simpson is actually a real town. Um, and it's about a two or three hour drive through rough terrain to Glacier Ridge. Glacier Ridge's population is about 500 or so. Uh, additionally, it is a well-known hunting town. There's a hunting lodge that a lot of people book into. Uh, it is a touristy town because a lot of people come there to visit the Nahani Valley National Park because it's a beautiful area. It's actually very nice there if you look at pictures. There's rivers, waterfalls, um, stuff like that. Uh, there's underground hot springs that makes like a rainforest type environment in the middle of northern Canada, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... Uh, Glacier Ridge, although very nice, has some strange goings on. Uh, we are a group of paranormal investigators who are inve investigating any claims of cryptids that might come about. Um, so with this one in particular, they took a look around, found some research showing that there was a high, uh, a lot of activity in the area high amount of activity uh so they decided you know what this is where we're gonna do our show they hired on our crew and now they're moving here not permanently but for a while at least um okay so moving on to next step last week we didn't do a whole lot um you guys set up an appointment to go and talk. Well, you didn't set up an appointment. You went to an email. No, there's more to the episode than just that one section. Uh, no, no, I realize that. Yeah, you went to uh, the hunting lodge, uh, set up an appointment mm -hmm. for, I think, tomorrow with Gail. Is that her name? Gail? No, that's not her name. Uh, Hazel. Yes. Um, so yeah, you did that. Um, additionally, Victor also had the bright idea that right after the crew broke into the police station, he was going to go and try and tell the police how to do their job. It went very well. It went very, very well. Um, and then... Yeah, not a whole lot happened, but you guys ended up skipping forward a little bit, and uh, you watched the lecture by Dr. Helena Sinclair on the Shadow Realms. Uh, you asked a couple of questions, got a couple of questions answered, uh, and then as that was going on, you ended up catching a glimpse of somebody standing in the doorway. The person that was standing in the doorway was none other than uh, Evelyn's daughter, Emily. Um, Emily and Wyatt hit it off and decided to go upstairs to his bedroom to edit footage. Um, and then uh, Maxine sent off an email to Helena Sinclair saying that we have actual evidence of shadow realms and different beings from different dimensions showing off yeah stuff plus we offered her ten thousand ten thousand if there was thing. if there was nothing here if it was a right. waste of her time if if she didn't see anything So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Go. So, uh, what time of day are we at now? Like, where, where are we at? Uh, it's pretty much just after you watched the lecture, which was in the evening. Um, and he, Maxine just sent off the email. Um, I believe this is Thursday, so one more day and then it's the weekend. Okay. 
I'm trying to find my notes. Okay, so Wyatt has taken off with Emily. Yep. Wyatt's just upstairs. He hasn't taken off. No, 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 but I'm saying he's not in the room. Okay, well, just keep in mind, Wyatt does take off a lot, so just... <laughs> well, I was going to say, that we know of. Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm hoping that she has a little more sense. Because well, she is. Yeah, I sent Charlie to watch them, so... Oh, okay. Because, yeah. Because Wyatt is 14? Yes. And Emily was 15. Okay. 15. Okay. All right. And we were going to talk to, is that the appointment with Hazel today or tomorrow? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Oh, right. Right and early. Right and early. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to think if we should head off anywhere. And the guy from the, the guy that was fixing my drone said he would drop it off or get in touch with us here. Yes, but it was going to be a few days. No, no, I knew that, but it's like, I'm just trying Plus, to Plus, we're get coming my... up for the weekend, so it's going to be even longer. True. And they don't have Amazon or anything to... Oh, they do. It just takes forever to get yeah. there. Sorry. Same day delivery. Okay. So, I'm trying to think of what I would like to go and do. What time of day did you say this was? It's in the evening. Uh, I forget what oh. time exactly she, set, like, the thing was set for, but it's finished now. So, let's say she ran for about an hour. So, let's go 830 Okay. So I don't know what you're up to, what you're wanting to do, Victor, but I'm just wondering if we should wander on down to the, uh, what's the name of the pub here? The bar. Turner's Pub? Is that where we saw all the stuff happen? Uh, right. not all yeah, the Turner's stuff. Pub. No, but we, that was where Charlie saw the eyes and that. Right? He saw the eyes? Charlie was the only one who saw the eyes, yes. No, no, yeah. Okay, so that seems to be where everybody goes and meets. Do you want to... Yeah, we go down there. Because Charlie's with Wyatt, so that should be okay. And, uh, yeah, we can head down to the right. Turner's Pub and see if we can get anybody to talk to us, see if we can shake up some people or do something like that. All right. You're going to try and shake up some people? Well, you know, just talk to them, but just to see if we can get any more info or talk to anybody else. Generally when people are drinking, they're a little more chatty. Well, we could just go get drinks and see who's there and yeah. maybe they approach us. Never yeah. Okay, so we're gonna head off to the Turner's Pub. Okay, uh, so that's just you and Victor. Yeah, well, like I said, Wyatt's, Wyatt's doing Please. the video editing. Video editing with Emily. You forgot to use the air quotes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know if Wyatt's well, exactly there yet. Well, uh, not only that, but it, it, with Charlie there, it's like, I don't think too much is going to happen. Then maybe Frankie wants to join us later. Frankie just messaged uh, saying she's almost home. Well, okay. they're, they're almost home. Um, well, person, the player, person which is a she, is, is almost home. Well, almost, yes. Uh, yes okay. Yeah. 
So I'll just leave a note for Frankie. Okay. So you're going to Turner's Pub, and like I said, it's around eight thirty. Uh, sure. Let's quickly go upstairs to Wyatt and Emily. All right. What are you showing her exactly, Wyatt? I don't really have any good footage, I don't think. You want to show her footage, so you tell me what you're showing her. I'm going to try to bring up the footage from the jail cell. When it flies overhead? Yeah, but the audio should have still been recording, so it would have had us you know, yelling and screaming and stuff like that. Yes, however, the monster wasn't saying anything. No, I know, but like we, it still has us talking about it and things that are going on. Uh, so what was going on during that time is you'll hear you kind of and Maxine kind of. And then uh, Frankie was Frankie. Talking. Frankie was reading the journal. Yeah. So you'd have Frankie reading the journal. Uh, and you'd probably hear like the sound of like ice cracking, but that's about it. Uh, so you, like, pull it up on the computer and start going, like, frame by frame as it goes overhead. And you see it basically all it looks like is three people standing there. And and she's like, you're saying that's the monster? The monster's there. Uh, but it, the video here doesn't capture it. Frankie is reading passages out of... The journal to the monster because it was attacking uh the guy in the next cell same cell same cell same cell you made that same mistake last time too yeah you did i i totally thought they were in two different cells no same there's only one cell in the place okay yeah they were they were in the same cell and frankie was trying to save him because he was freezing to death which is why you hear the cracking ice they're so brave. I'm sure you would have gone there if true. you could have. Yeah, I was about to, but I needed to stay outside to help out. <laughs> Your voice I've is so deep and manly. <laughs> flex, flex. I'm not doing the voice tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> Pex, Pex, jump a little bit. Just, what? just pretend. You're just gonna have to pretend the voice tonight. Pretend that this sounds like a 14 year old boy. Well, yes, maybe his voice cracked. Just remember last episode, his voice cracked. This episode, it's full blown. He's good. There we go. Done. The done. Yeah. Okay. Um, is, is that it? Do you have anything else? That's all we have, really, of the monster, but um, this is some footage of the cave. I'll go switch over to the footage of where the cave was. We don't have any good footage there, but... What are all those ice spots on the wall? Um... It was using some kind of ice. Like I said, it was encasing Frankie and the other guy in ice in the cell. So, probably some kind of byproduct of that is what you see on the walls here. So you think they're using like magical powers, or are they? What are, What do you think? So I was thinking it was liquid nitrogen when they were in the cells, but everybody keeps telling me that I was wrong. So I don't know. What do you think it is? Oh, it's definitely a monster. There's so many monster stories around here. You just gotta talk to people around town. They they're. There's different ones who bring it up. You should talk to... Have you met Finn? Oh, yeah. He's my buddy. He... He took me out. I know he's just a kid, but he has some stories, and some of them sound, like, real. Well, actually, it's Finn's uh, stories that were able to help crack the code and get us to where we're able to find this one. Really? So Finn's seen this one. Uh, I don't know if Finn's seen this one or not. Actually, I guess so, because Finn is the one that told me about where to find him. So, yeah, I guess Finn has seen this one. That's so cool. Maybe 
maybe none of his stories were fake. We we should talk to him more. Maybe they can, uh, Finn can lead you to the next one. Uh, you you seem like you've heard a lot of the stories. What other stories have you heard about? Um, has he told you the one about the singing? No. There's uh he said that when he's by the water, he can sometimes hear some lady singing. But he looks around and sees nothing. Oh. But um I want to ask. And then there's a big furry guy, which could just be Bigfoot to be honest, because you know, who knows? And then uh, there's also an old lady who has blue skin. He said that she walks like an old lady, but her skin is blue. Oh. And she walks with like a staff that has like a rock on top of it, he says, but a shiny rock. So maybe a crystal? Maybe. Or a power stone. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can talk to him, or maybe there's just some people around town who'd be able to help you out. What's your favorite story? I really like the one with the lady singing. Have you tried to go out and hear the lady singing yourself? No... I, honestly, I'm not as brave as Finn is. I know he's younger than I am, but, like, that's because he doesn't think things through yet. And I think things through, and I'm like, well, yes, it could be fake, but there's also bears and mountain lions and uh, cougar. I think mountain lions and cougars are the same thing, so I shouldn't say that. Uh, wolves, coyotes, all of that in the woods. So even if, uh, let's say, the monsters aren't real, there's still things that could tear me to pieces. You want to go look for it? Yeah. If we take some fire and make, well, if we take, if we have stuff to make like a torch, then if we end up running into any of those other things, the fire should help keep them at bay. You think? What I always see in the movies. You wave a torch at wolves and they back off. I mean, I don't know that you can always trust what you see in the movies, but haven't you done this stuff before? Yeah, I also have a rifle, so. Oh, well, there you go. But the torch is more fun. That's fair. I, I, I like fire, too. <laughs> Have you, uh, do you know anybody else that's, that tries to take videos like this and has seen anything? Um, no. Um, I know sometimes there'll be some newcomers in town. I'm about to snap a rubber band. I know there's some newcomers in town that'll talk and about things that they've seen but I I don't know anyone in town who likes to talk about this stuff they seem to get really quiet whenever you bring this stuff up I, although I know um sorry what's her name What are you doing? Standing up. Oh, did you create a standing desk with that string you were pulling? Yep, that's exactly what I did. Okay, I have to adjust your camera again then. Uh, <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, Victoria, she, uh, she doesn't mind talking about this kind of stuff. And Cassandra's a little weird, but she'll talk about this stuff as well. 
And then so um, people that'll talk about it, what do they say? Well, Victoria's into like the creepy things, so she believes in like all the all the stuff. Cassandra, she's she's the one who runs the apothecary. Have you been there? Yeah, so she's a little little on the strange side. One sec here, sorry. Alright, I fixed your camera. Are you gonna be sitting back down at some point? Yep, probably. <laughs> um Yeah, she's all about like uh using the Earth's medicine to fix us, which I mean there is some some uh knowledge and truth behind what she's saying. I just you know we have modern medicine, why not use it? Um, what so, do you feel about the saying that, uh, you know, science is just the codification, like things that were mystical in the past get explained through science and later they become science. So maybe some of the stuff she's doing really is science instead of, you know, modern, just not to knock modern medicine, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, yeah, it could be. Uh, I haven't really thought about that. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. Uh, with the stuff that's been going on in town, it's definitely... Things seem like they don't really add up and they're hard to explain. I've been doing this a while and all of the other cases we've ever found have always been something else. What? Like what? Uh, there was a ghoul in Cincinnati. There was... Uh, chupacabra down in texas that one was just a diseased dog um they usually are they had uh mothman uh, in up in the pacific northwest i think we were looking in oregon um and it turned out to be <laughs> somebody's uh porch lights uh that you could see from the road but at the right angle it looked like it was a face and some glowing red eyes so similar to what you're hunting now yeah so do you think it's but just there's actually something here oh so you do believe I've seen it. Okay. Do you want to take me to it? Um, I know where its cave is, but it's probably not very safe. Um, one of our friends got kind of injured the last time we were there. I almost got injured. When we were in the cell, or they were in the cell, two people were pretty badly damaged by the cold. Well, I mean, isn't danger kind of exciting sometimes? I mean, if you want to go to the cave, we can go check it out. That's what Frankie and I were going to go do. Let's go do it. Okay. We got to go out the window, though, because Charlie's out in the front. Is Charlie actually? Did Charlie actually say he was waiting? Came up there. We sent Charlie to just kind of watch Wyatt. And Charlie said, I "Make sure you leave the door just open." Had Charlie at, out in front of the door. Yeah, he's just outside the door. That's what we're saying, anyway. Yeah. The door is open, so you guys would have to like, you know, sneak. But otherwise, yeah, you could probably. Pull one over on him. 
I feel like you'd have to we'll have just, some sound of some sort, though. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say we'll just turn up the volume on the. I have hours of footage. I'll just turn up the volume on the footage, and we'll sneak out the window. You think that'll work? Yeah, I've gotten away from Charlie multiple times. Oliver keeps telling me he's a lizard man. He doesn't like it when you tell him that. Uh, I'm trying to, whenever the dryer is bugging, I'm trying to, it's, cause it comes through if I'm talking when the dryer is going. Mm -hmm. But the dryer just finished, so we're good. It's a cat with a dog. Hello. Hello. Is that a new dog? No, it's Minnie. It's my baby dog. <laughs> it, it's a new one from maybe last time you saw it, but it's not new. new. Uh, wasn't that the dog that was put on her head? Yes. Oh, maybe. Yes. It is. I have dementia, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Had to fix the camera. We're good to go. Uh, so, Frankie. Um, when you so. go, go downstairs, you are given a note by Evelyn saying, um, to meet Maxine and Victor at the local bar up to you if you want to go, but that's what you get. Well, it is a bar, so I guess I can go <laughs> meet. Twist, twist the rubber arm. I, yes, really. I guess I'll head to the bar. I can do that. Okay. Uh, so, Wyatt, you and Emily sneak out the window. Frankie, you head to the bar. What did I miss? Um, Never mind. I nothing. Don't know. Uh, I don't think you were here at the last game. Maybe Wyatt you were. doing Wyatt things? Wyatt, I mean... Wyatt has a girlfriend now. Barely. Come on. They just met like 15 minutes ago and immediately Wyatt invited her to his bedroom. To video. To edit videos. In quotes. Anyway. All right. But now they're sneaking off to the cave. Uh, yes, they, she wanted to go to the cave. So Wyatt decided he was going to sneak her out and they were going to go to the cave. Because there's no way that could go wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, so Victor and Maxine, you're at the bar. What are you doing? Well, we'd Drinking be, and observing. We'd be checking to see who's around. Drinking and observing? Mm hmm Um, okay. Is there anyone in particular you're looking for? No, no, I gotta get my thing up to suck. Oh, I don't know where my note go again. Okay, so, uh, I was looking back through the notes, and then, of course, Emily brought it up, too. But when... <laughs> Would Frankie have told Frankie would have told us what she talked to uh, 
Victoria about, or Vicky about, right? Yeah, I think I told you guys about. Yeah, but see if see if Victoria is there just to talk to her, and then if Frankie comes along, they can also see if we can get a little bit more. Now that we have had the same type of thing, like we've seen the red eyes and all that stuff, and yeah, um, yeah, because one thing that that I have written down that. Victoria wanted recognition if anything's proven. So it's like, it sounds like she would be pretty open to talking some more. And then, yeah, like we can see if she's there or if, uh, who else did we just talk about? Who talked to Cassandra? That was you. Was that Frankie? As I did. You and Wyatt weren't there. Okay. So yeah, we can kind of just touch base and see. Nobody's talked to that old lady, right? Maggie? No. Yeah. I don't know whether she'd be in the bar, but anyway. Oh yeah. For I sure. just want to kind of She yeah. she likes well, to get she knows? likes to get Liddy on a Thursday. But you said it's like nine thirty. Maybe she likes to have a little glass of wine before she It's nine thirty, which means bed. she should already be going to bed. She had supper at four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she should have been asleep like two hours ago. Yeah. Way ahead. Yeah. But yeah, no, Maggie definitely likes seeing Liddy on a Thursday. Um, nice. Maybe, did you just maybe lower these, your uh... chair again? <laughs> Why well, just wants to? Because he was doing test. his yo-yo. That's true. Oh, hey, man. yo-yo while you're sitting down. Very difficult. You know what else is difficult? Having to change your kit, the camera, every two seconds. Hold a second, he's standing up again. <laughs> he got, he's wrapping his yo-yo yo -yo back up as he's sitting, then he's gonna stand right back up again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, there is no old lady at this bar. Aww. Um. You do see uh, Charlotte there. Um, she's reading a book. Um, okay. You see Aria there. Um, there is a guy playing guitar uh, who you haven't seen before. Um, he's kind of doing okay. some live music. Speaking of music, I got to change that. And it's also very loud. Um, I have to change that as well. Um, uh, sorry, one second here. They have bar music. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's playing some live music for the bar. It does not sound like this. It's more country esque. Um, do you want me to just send some pictures of to who you see in the bar and you can decide who you want to talk to? Sure. I like how uh, he messaged saying it's a yo U B T E. I assume that was supposed to be Yo-Yo BTW. Oh, <laughs> Probably because he is Yo-Yoing. It's a Yo-Yo BTE. That's how you just say it in Canadian. It's a Yo-Yo 5 a <laughs> Yes. Uh, where are my pictures? <laughs> That's tough. So yeah, I'm gonna send some pictures of the people that are here, and you can decide if there's somebody you want to talk to or not. But it'll be up to you. Okay. 
That sound good? Sure. All right. 